So uh, good afternoon, everybody, at this point. Thank you all for coming back uh, after the break. Celia and I are happy to be here today and present to you our final project that we have been working on this month. It's a partnership model for the Ongawa micro hydro power plant that they're going to build in Tanzania. So Celia will actually give us a quick introduction to the project. And then after our concluding remarks, you're free to ask any questions that you might have. Thank you. So the villages Lugulu, Kansa and Womba in the northeastern part of Tanzania has limited um, livelihood uh, improvement opportunities. Uh, the sanitation and health facilities are poor and their possibilities of uh, increasing their economic income is um, limited as uh, most uh, work is based on agricultural activity. Their um, access to natural resources has been restricted as the nearby forest has been declared a natural reserve. And so because of this, they're no longer able to collect firewood from this area. They're also, uh, their access to the river is also restricted uh, due to uh, pressure on this natural resource. And this is where Ongawa comes into the picture. Ongawa is a Spanish uh, engineering NGO, uh, wants to build a power plant, micro hydro power plant on the Yungawa River. Uh, they want to sell the electricity produced to the main national grid. This, however, in itself does not solve the issues that the villages are facing, which is um, no access to electricity as well as poor natural resource management. Julia will, in just a moment, explain how we suggest that they can solve the issues through a partnership with the micro hydro power plant. Um, but the, and then sorry, and then I will <laughs> explain the financial um, model, uh, which will look into how you can um, finance and fund a development project in a different way. But the essence of it all is to connect the community and the environment and the partnership so that they all um, can benefit from each other's activities and contributions. So why do we need to build a, a partnership around this project? Well, the truth is that it seems that without a partnership, the people most in need of the work that Ongawa does would not be receiving it. The if this was a typical private public project, then the, return, the profits earned would just stay between the investors and the government and nothing would trickle down to the people. Furthermore, just because you bring the grid to the villages doesn't mean that people get electricity. There's a $90 connection fee that people have to pay in order to get electricity and for many this is simply too high. Actually there's a village right next to the three villages that received the national grid in 2009 but only 10% of the households connected and reason was this high connection fee. Also the bigger issue however is the environment. Celia mentioned some of, some of the problems that we're facing in the region. It's poor sanitation and water, a restricted area access to the uh, forest, uh, uh, land erosion due to the slopes that they are building next to the river, mostly all the way uh, extending down to the river and damaging the riverside forest. So there's three main reasons why we need to have a partnership. How can this partnership help? Because it's a partnership that is a cross-sector partnership um, making this link between energy, education, um, sorry, energy, environmental, conservation and poverty reduction. Because this is the link. Poverty reduction and environment are closely linked. These people depend on that their environment is being taken care of. So this cross-sector partnership will include all relevant stakeholders. It will give the villagers themselves a voice when it comes to their development and when it comes to their environment. A cross-sector partnership will have a focus on many different issues. So, and it will show how this can be done. For example, many few examples that we have is that if environmental services are provided by the villagers, the micro hydro power plant project can help by supporting them uh, to connect to the national grid. Remember I said it was quite an expensive thing, so that is one of the things. Another thing that we can look into is to team up with a local um, rice, hu rice husk brick production company. Um, remember Celia said that there's big problems of deforestation, so by linking up with other issues such as this uh, rice husk for sustainable cooking, that is an issue that can be addressed. Other uh, points that can be addressed is through drip irrigation by, or electrified drip irrigation actually. Uh, that reduces the pressures on the river and it increases their yields 
and so forth. Um, a partnership is not just there to be a partnership. A partnership has to do bigger things. The end goal of a partnership is not to be a partnership. Therefore, it should reach out to different issues. Another issue that it could link up with is education. The link is quite clear. You electrify a village, you have light in a school. There's better studying. You can have night classes for adults. Another issue is, of course, linked to agriculture. I mentioned a few of those. So it's, it's really about vertical as well as horizontal mainstreaming. Vertical going deeper into other issues, linking up with other issues, and horizontal mainstreaming reaching out to other organizations that might be dealing with other issues in the area, linking up with NGOs that are promoting sustainable agricultural um, efforts and so forth. So who are the partners in this partnership? There are certain elements that have, or certain partners that have to be in the partnership and others can be debated. But the main partners uh, are Ongawa, of course, for the first two or three initial years when setting this up, but they should step out afterwards and let this partnership rule itself. There has to be a representative for each of the villages. They have to have a voice in this. It is for them. LM Investment is a private um, factory that is currently located on the river and is using the water for their mill and it's giving the um, Ongawa micro hydropower plant the water right to be using uh, the river as well. Then Silly will explain this a little bit more from a funding perspective but we have looked into this um, idea of having Tanzanian individuals invest money into this hydropower plant as well as having international micro investments from people like you and me to be able to contribute and show interest in this project by, develop, uh, by investing money. Um, this whole idea then come up where Ongawa does a lot of work in is education for development programs. And this whole idea is based on the fact that if we don't change the mindsets of people in the north, then any development project is only going to have a limited impact. If we don't nurture this global society where everybody is aiming for the same goal, of making a better world, then we're not going to get there. So by having international microinvestments, we have been looking at this partnership with a Spanish business called ECHO, that we can really have this education for development idea and, and introduce uh, them into the project as well. I don't know if I'm doing this thing justice, so if you have any other questions, please ask me afterwards. Um, when you have a partnership, it's important that all the partner's needs and wants are met. If they're not satisfied with the partnership, then it's going to fail. Um, they have valuable contributions and resources that they can bring to the partnership, as well as motivations behind why they want to be there in the first place. So all of these have been looked at. We discussed the communications and meetings that have to take place for this. Remember, we have people coming from different backgrounds, different educational levels. Perhaps some of them will not be literate. So these are very important aspects within the partnership. And last but not least, the roles and responsibilities to take on can at this point not, we know which one, which, what they are, but we can't decide at this moment, you should be doing this or you should be doing that. It's within the partnership that they have to decide and see who can perhaps take on the role of a leadership or, or of a leader. Um, but there are certain classic roles, of course, like a CEO and a treasurer, and administration, but also a person for the broker role. Uh, that we all know about, and then uh, persons for grievances to uh, discuss any problems that are arising in the partnership and to deal with these before they become a, prog a problem for the partnership to move on. Of course, we also looked at how uh, to join and exit a partnership, but overall this is um, the main things that have to be remembered. And unfortunately, or fortunately, money and capital is one of the biggest, or is <laughs> what we need to make a project work, so Silly will look at how can you satisfy investors, but maximizing the outcomes for the villages and the environment? So investors and donors are crucial for the project to become a reality. And this is why we combine the efforts from international and local investors, as well as traditional donations and crowdfunding. Um, the different sources uh, bring diversity, knowledge, as well as a sense of communal ownership to the partnership. Uh, one of the greatest aims is to give as much as possible back to the community and keep the capital within Tanzania. Um, sorry. Um, 
So if the ownership ends up purely in the hands of international investors or is only achieved through donations, it will be challenging to get the local community on board. It is therefore very important to get a sense of balance between donations and uh, investors, uh, as well as international and local. Um, the main uh, investors that we've been looking into and we'll be discussing today is ECHO that Julia mentioned. They will be mainly in charge of channeling the Spanish micro-investors. Uh, we also looked at Acumen, uh, which is an international uh, non-profit uh, impact fund. They receive donations, which they then again reinvest in uh, projects in low-income communities, mainly with a focus on environmental and social issues. And they believe in what is called patient capital. Uh, this means that they understand the risk that they're facing uh, with entering these kinds of projects. They understand that they need a long-term view on it, but they expect a return and they set the bar between 0% and what one could usually expect from a pure profit-driven uh, project, which you can see in this graph here. They position themselves between traditional aid and pure profit-oriented. Um, so, uh, and other investors that we've been looking into is uh, local micro-investors, so, um, Tanzanian individuals. Um, we also looked at um, local businesses such as LM Investment. And all of these investors will bring different amounts to the table, have different requirements when it comes to uh, payback period uh, and a return. Uh, so, and this is why we've created an Excel tool. Uh, this is a um, flexible instrument uh, with variables such as inflation, currency exchange, uh, tariff, feeding tariffs. Um, and so you can use the tool to create scenario analysis. Um, you can um, test the financial viability of uh, the power plant and you can um, design the best um, or model for how you can satisfy all investors and stakeholders. So I'll shortly explain, um, it looks a bit complicated, but I'll explain <laughs> Uh, section by section. It's not the whole tool, uh, but I think it will give you an image of what it can do and the potential that it has. So the first section here is the general data. Can anyone see what it says? Okay, good. Um, so the first section is general data, uh, which has the capital cost, inflation, etc. And these can all be changed. All the green numbers are variables that can be changed and has an effect on every other number in uh, the tool. Underneath here, you see all the different investors uh, and their requirements in regards to payback time um, and how long they will be receiving profit shares. <coughs> At the bottom here, you have an, uh, one line that is called partnership savings, which has been included in order to uh, prepare for unexpected future events. Um, at the top over in the other corner here, you see that here again is the different investors and their investment amount. On the side here, it's the um, <laughs> percentage, so the balance between donations and um, investment. Uh, and here is, so for the reason of explaining this, uh, we've only included five years. The contract, however, uh, with Evura, which is the Energy Water Utility Regulatory Authority, <laughs> is 15 years. Um, so here you can see the income, uh, the cost, uh, as well as the revenue for each year. Uh, there's two lines here, which is Levi for Evuda, which is 1% of uh, profit. Um, and uh, for Rea, it's 3%. That's the Rural Energy Agency. And so here is the revenue for each year. The last part shows how this revenue here is um, split between the different investors. And if we look at an example, for example, the local micro-investors, they invest um, 20,000. They want that to be paid back within two years, receive profit over four years. So they receive here, they've been paid back within two years, receiving profits over, uh, profit shares over four, and then nothing from year five. That's when they've been satisfied. Um, so all of these green numbers will affect this and this and give you a result and a scenario of the financial situation. So <laughs> I'm sure there's questions at the end regarding this tool. Uh, it's a bit hard to explain in a uh, short amount of time, but hopefully I've given you an insight to how it works and the potential that it has um, and how it can be used for the uh, partnership. 
Um, the main factor that I want to point out before I finish off is that there is a balance between investment and donations and locals and internationals. <clears throat> so what we did was provide Ongawa with a pre-feasibility study, perhaps, uh, of different things to look into. Before we did anything, we did the risk analysis of that risks that might uh, be faced by this micro power plant. So we looked into political, social, economic, as well as environmental risks. Political mostly related to corruption. Uh, economic risks are related to uh, currency inflation, as well as currency exchange rates, sorry, and inflation, which is quite big and a problem in Tanzania. Social risks are mostly related to the point that if people aren't capacity built and if there's not enough of awareness raising done around this topic of energy and electricity and what this can do to you, to your life, then that is a big risk um, for the partnership or for the project as well. Um, after that, we then devise this whole partnership structure. Sorry, uh, environmental risks related to droughts and uh, limited rainfall, which then link to operational risks and supply risks, so no income. After that, we set up the partnership structure, um, looking at how you can incorporate the villages and make sure that the environmental services and that the environment is also reflected within this. The funding structure, looking at different uh, sources of uh, funding, both donation and investment based, coming from crowd platforms, cr um, in, in private investments, impact funds, local as well as international micro donations. Both the partnership and the funding tool are set up in such a way that the overall outcome should be maximized for the villagers and for the environment. This is what this was all about. Overall, we think the project has great potential and we would like to see it become reality. Thank you. Thank you. Can, can Nicola borrow some of these? First of all, thank you very much. <laughs> you did it very well. Um, yeah, I would like to thank you not for only for today's presentation, but really for these interesting months we shared together. Um, the ideas I had when we began, uh, thank you to your challenging uh, approach, have changed it, and I think the project is much better now than when we started <laughs> some months ago. Uh, I really love this project, so any comments I will do is going to be in that line. Um, I really believe it's very groundbreaking. Um, shifting, moving away from this 100% donor approach to mobilizing investors' money, that's really, really yeah. uh, innovative. Uh, it never been done in Spain for sure, and I don't know many cases in the world. Uh, my question is that I ask myself, so I pose you this question today. Uh, is it so innovative and so special uh, that do you think what we have done uh, can be scaled up in other Project. projects? I have the microphone, I go. <laughs> Why not? I mean, that should be the answer to any project or anything within development work, I think, has to always be, why not? Challenge what is being done right now and, and look for something else because a lot of the attempts that are being made fail. And I think this is, in a way, this is looking at the funding mechanism of also being part of the development work. If you allow people either within, let's take this example, no? So if you allow middle class Tanzanians to invest in a project that is in their country with their money and the money that they make on this project stays within their country, then the funding mechanism itself has become part of the development project. They have earned sustainable income. They have promoted the development of their people. It's not a big international corporate whatever who's invested money, but it's, it's their money. And the same goes for um, international investors, uh, Spanish middle class, having an interest in this project, wanting to support it, contributing money, getting a reward. Um, I don't see why it's, it can't be scaled up because it's just about opening your mindset, basically, I think. 
And I think it's about being open to the fact that you can just be open about what you're doing and be happy to share what you're doing with other projects and share the knowledge. And I think essentially the fact that you're covering social, environmental and economical in one go makes it more sustainable and makes it something that you want to, like, it, something that you can. <laughs> Very yeah. good explaining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes it, I don't know, it covers everything in one go. It makes it um, something that, it fixes, the, it fixes the problem from the root and covers, so it is sustainable. Yes. Good job. <laughs> okay. uh, I think you have a, a very challenging uh, project. I think uh, the way of uh, funding this kind of uh, operation is uh, absolutely new. I, I don't have the data, but I, I think yes, in uh, in Spain, it's uh, certainly the the first the first thing that uh, will will be done like this. Um, coming back to the question uh, was asking uh, Nicola. I know the place, so I think uh, certainly in East Africa it might be a, a country prepared to this kind of uh, to this kind of operation and this kind of investment. But I would like to to ask you um, what is the reflection you had about um, the new way of funding, the new way of investment, and um, the ethical or um, po possible uh, ethical problems that can bring the fact that we are talking about an investment with a return on investment for some of the, um, of the partners and uh, a traditional um, investment on the other side. How do you think this can be, um, this can be challenged, this can be um, um, worked in, uh, in order to not uh, create uh, problems between the different peoples who are going to, uh, to make a donation or an apportation, uh, an economic apportation on, on the project. The que so just to make sure, so the question is why, why should some people donate and not earn a profit and some people no, should? Not why, but what do you think uh, should be, um, should be um, taking care when, uh, when it's going to be asked to, to the people to donate some, yeah. some, uh, some money? explaining that some of the investors are going to get a return on investment on, a, uh, on the oh. participation. Well, mm, okay, well, the main donors to this project would be, um, we didn't include those because that we didn't think that was our part, it wasn't the innovative part of our project. So EU, uh, UN, all of those, that's donation based and I mean, that's what they do, no? So <laughs> I don't think that they will be asking for any return. How can you convince local individual investors to invest money? I think by showing them the project, what it can do, by showing them that whatever their needs are, whatever their requirements are for getting back their um, invested return, showing them that it, this is a viable project, it's a project in their country, not somewhere else, for their people, not for somebody else. I think this is the main part. How to then tell a business it should donate and not invest, whereas to tell individual people they can invest and earn money, it's also a whole, it's the point of this. It, like I said before, if you look at the funding mechanism being part of the development work and telling a company that we're letting people invest because we feel like, I mean, middle class, <coughs> sorry, middle class Tanzania is not middle class Europe. So by giving them a chance of making uh, a modest, uh, profit on their investment. I mean, it's not big, big numbers we're talking about either, but it can be a big investment for them, and it's something that I think should be promoted. And if it's explained well, I don't think there is a problem, but I don't know. It's something to look into, definitely. I and so. I, I think um, international businesses, if they were to invest, not financially, but or they could both financially and knowledge, I think they could use it to another advantage than just getting profits from it. Mm. They get publicity or they get um, they get into the market for example in Tanzania um, we discussed um, a company called Agua Imara um, and they are trying to start up in East Africa so they could that could be a way of getting to know the market getting to know the locals and so getting um, 
that's their reason for being there, not necessarily money back. Okay, um, well, well done to you both. And I think you've really got to be congratulated for um, approaching this project from, from the point of view of two outsiders who didn't know a lot about Tanzania and also you've not been there and it's incredibly difficult to pick up the nuances on the ground when you've never actually visited the project. So I think you've done a fantastic job and having read the report I can see the amount of, of work that's gone into it. So well done for that. Um, my question is about the partnership approach, it would be. <laughs> and if we're talking about um, partnerships, one of the, the premises of a partnership is that you're not only drawing on financial resources, you're drawing on in-kind resources as well in order to create this ripple-out effect that I think you were, you were expressing, Silje. So can you tell me what kind of in-kind or non-financial resources um, uh, you, you think could be used and where they might come from? from in relation to this partnership? Well, we have the one that I just mentioned, mm -hmm. Agua Imara, um, who could potentially uh, assist with knowledge in regards to building a hydropower plant. That's their expertise. Uh, as well as, I don't think we mentioned it, but we looked into uh, carbon credits and um, gold standard. And they also have experience with this because they're they're owned by another company, which is owned by another company, and they all have experience when it comes to um, CDMs. Um, and so this is a way they can contribute with their um, knowledge, I think. Do you have any other um, contributions? Well, just uh, regarding the villages themselves that would be part of this partnership is, of course, their knowledge is invaluable when it comes to n knowing how to address their needs. Who else knows better what they want and how to do it than them? So I think that is another in-kind contribution within the partnership that is not money. Um, it, we did have uh, certain discussions regarding this uh, partnership structure when it comes to the core of it. Some, um, either we can have the core just consisting of people either earning and making money from this partnership, or we can have it broadened, meaning we could also include, for example, the... Um, Pangani River Basin Authority, which is there to manage the river. Well, the name <coughs> says it is, manages the river. Um, they could be part of the partnership because they bring knowledge regarding environmental management, uh, water management. They would not have an in-kind uh, contribution, but they would bring knowledge um, to the partnership. But I didn't list it here because it's, still, it's something that has to be discussed within the part. Ultimately, it's up to them to decide what should our structure be. The ones that I listed have to be in the partnership because they all need a voice, otherwise it won't okay. make it. Thank you. Oh. Any, any other questions? No, not, not a question, just um, oh. insisting uh, in the fact that uh, I think that thinking about partnership, multi-stakeholder partnership this, uh, of this kind, it's certainly one of the um, places in, in Africa that um, is better um, prepared to, uh, to, to receive this kind of, uh, of, uh, of investment in, in general. And um, because I didn't say it before, just congratulations for the, for the work. I think I, I can imagine because I, I know the place, I know the complication of the, of the data and so on. So I imagine that uh, it has been a very strong, uh, strong work behind, uh, behind the, the tool you've been using. And uh, I hope that is going to, uh, to be a reality in, uh, in the next years. Thank you. So do we. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.